to another edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. In today's edition, we're going to be looking at how to properly install wire into an Everlast Power iMig welder. The welder we're going to be using today is an iMig 160. It's actually my own personal unit. Now this is the same unit as the 200 current series. Our goal today is actually to show you how to properly install the wire so that you don't have birds nesting or improper feeding. Although we're going to be showing you how to set up a Power iMig welder from Everlast, most MIG welders, just like the Everlast, set up essentially the same way. The things that we're going to discuss pretty much transfer over to almost any brand. Now we've opened up the unit so we can discuss the different parts of the internals of a MIG welder. Now this is the spool holder. This is where your spool of wire actually resides and it turns inside this right here. Now this is your drive mechanism. This is actually what feeds your wire from the spool into your gun. And we'll show you how all this connects and goes together in just a minute. But first, let's go back to the spool holder. The holder is designed to hold two different diameter uh, spools of wire. So this will hold a 4 inch or a 8 inch roll of wire. That basically gets you uh, this little small wire like this or the larger spool like this. Now this is not the largest spool. This is a medium sized spool which will hold up to 12 pounds depending on the manufacturer. The small spool in steel is a two pound roll. In aluminum it's a one pound roll. Now this comes apart actually you have a wing nut here, you have a washer next, a little spring, and you have a little collar here. It looks kind of like a washer. Now, this actually has a little shoulder area here, and there's a shoulder area here on the inside. And what actually happens is that this fits down into the hub of the spool. And when you go on with the wire, you tighten it down and it holds the wire. And we're going to do that in a second. Now the next thing we need to look at in some detail is the drive mechanism here. This is what's known as the feeder. Okay. Now what we have here first is the tensioning mechanism. This actually puts pressure down on the wire on the main drive roll here and it feeds it. Now the tensioning mechanism actually pops loose like this. And this is your top drive roll. It's actually an idler pulley and it's just there to put pressure down on the wire to engage the wire into the groove that is on the drive roll. Now I'm going to take the drive roll off here for a second. Now the drive roll has actually got two pieces in it, but you can see there is actually two grooves here. Now there are different markings on each side that will actually tell you the diameter of the groove. Now the groove itself is uh, important because the small groove is actually for a .030 and .035 wire. The larger groove is for a .040 and a .045 wire. Now if you get a smaller wire down into the larger groove, you're going to have difficulty feeding. So make sure that you're using the right side of the groove when you're trying to feed the wire diameter that you've selected. One other thing we need to point out is that when you're to change the drive roll, you don't swap the whole unit over because you have a shoulder here and you have a bushing. You actually pull the drive roll off the keyed shaft here and you just swap it over and then you'll have your drive roll engaged in the right side when you put it back on. And make sure that you take note of which side the flange is on when you take it off. You're going to have your wire sticking through a little hole like this. Do not take this off before you insert the wire onto the thing or your wire will start to despool with you and then you have a big mess. To put the wire on, make sure the wire is coming from the bottom, not from the top. If it's coming from the top, it won't feed correctly. Now you just simply install it onto the hub like that, hold it in place while you put your other sleeve on there. Put your tensioning spring over it, put your washer on it, and then you take your nut just like this 
and tighten it until you get the spring mostly collapsed. Don't tighten it tight. You want a little play and that way the spool will actually roll on the collar. What we have here, we have actually this, the gun and we're going to insert it into the quick connect fitting here. Now this is a Euro style fitting. Several different name brand welders in the U.S. use this style fitting. It's a very good design and it's very quick to, to engage. Now we're installing the gun right now into the connector. Now that the gun has been installed completely, we're ready to start installing the wire. wire off here. We're ready to insert it and feed it through. I'm going to take the wire and you're going to bend the sheath over a little bit. Be sure you don't despool too much wire when you do this. But take the sheath and push the wire into it. And the wire will actually come out right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. But the wire is coming out and then you want to guide it into the brass fitting there. Now this will be actually sliding over the groove that's in the um, drive mechanism. You will want to put about three or four inches or as much wire as you can. Now make sure that the wire is fully engaged in the groove here or you're going to have problems. If it's riding on top of the shoulder it's going to feed erratically. So when you get done make sure that the roller here goes fully down and squeezes the wire into the groove. And then re-engage your tensioner. Now, the one good thing about this design is that you don't have a lot of opportunity for this to bird nest with you. And the bird nesting is where the wire gets all tangled up and, and bunched up in here. And you have to come in here and clean it out. Now, when you want to properly tension this, there is a process for tensioning we'll go over in a minute. But I know on my welder right now that it takes about a mark of three to four for proper tensioning and the best feeding for me. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to twist this until the three is covered up just above the four. Start feeding. You'll know if it's feeding erratically, you probably need a little more tension. You don't want too much tension where you're just grinding the wire. The next step is to turn the welder on. If you have gas connected, leave it off at this moment because you don't want to waste gas while you're trying to feed the wire out the end of the gun. The next step is to get the wire to feed from the feeder down into the connector here and all the way out the tip of the gun. To do that though, you're going to have to hold your, your cable as straight as possible to get the wire to come out the tip. Now, when you get ready to feed the wire, you simply press the torch switch here. Your wire feed will feed out. When you're feeding, you've got your finger on this and you can actually feel the wire as it comes up into the handle. Now, what you want to do is when it gets up to here, you want to let off and as it comes out the tip. Now, I'm almost ready to come out the tip. I want to press it so you can see it come out. Now, stop it. Once it gets there, you're done. When you get ready to weld, be sure to just trim the tip off like this. Now, when you get ready to adjust your tension properly, you're going to want to feed it on a block of wood so that you don't arc off any kind of surrounding metal that you may be already be grounded to. So you just want to take your wire and you want to press it against the block of the wood while you're feeding. Now you see that? It should curl up if you've got the proper tension. If you don't, it'll actually just stick and dig into the wood. Now when you're testing, make sure you're not feeding directly down or you will stick this into the block of wood. You want to angle so that the wire will actually curl over like this. If you're an experienced welder, setting up a MIG welder for the first time can be a little bit trying. Now, you have to have everything just right for it to feed properly. Things like setting up tension properly and making sure that the drive roll is installed properly are two of the most basic things that can cause a problem from the beginning. So we hope that this video has helped you. If you have any more questions, please give us a call at the number listed at the end of the video.